Hello everyone, we will continue the topic number range object and in the previous video we understood the concept of number range, significance and need of number range I showed you through MM01 and VA01 transaction code. Then we covered SNRO is the transaction code to create a number range object. Then I showed you the demo on number get next function module. If someone asks you, okay, tell me for this function, for this program or for this transaction code, which number object are using, then you can simply, simply check through number get next function module. Now what we will do, we will start with the practical part and we will take a requirement. What is the requirement? Suppose we have a screen. From the screen, user will give the employee name. User will give the age. Suppose user will give the address. User will give the employee name, employee age and employee address. Whenever user will pass these three things and click on to the execute button or you can say save button, system will generate the employee ID automatically. We will not give the employee ID, system will generate the employee ID. Suppose I will give some name. Suppose I will give the name, suppose Rahul. Suppose I will give some age. I will give some address. Whenever I will pass these three things and click on to the execute button, system will generate the employee ID and it will save into one database table. So in the database table, what we will save? Suppose employee ID one. What is the employee name? Suppose Rahul. We will save the employee age and we will save the employee address. Suppose next time. Next time I am passing some employee name, employee age and employee address. So it will generate the employee ID 2 and it will save employee ID 2 into the database table. Next time 3, 4, 5, 6. It means we are not passing the employee ID. System will generate the employee ID automatically. It means what we will do, we will create a number range object for the employee ID. Then we will assign the number range. Number range means what? We will give that employee ID will be between 1 to 10,000, 1 to 1 lakh, 1 to 2 lakh because it will not generate the number automatically. We need to tell that it will generate the number between this and this. Then third step, we will simply, simply use this function module into our program to next to get the next available number. Suppose simple example. Firstly, we will create a number range object through SNRO transaction code. Then we will define the number range for that number range object. Suppose I am saying between 1 to 10,000. Once we assign the, once we create the number range object and number ranges, then we will create a program and in that program, we will use this function module. We will pass the number range object to this function module and it will always, always give the next available number and we will save that number into the database table. Now you can simply, simply understand the significance of this function module. With the help of this function module only, you will get the next available number for this particular number range object. Now what we will do, firstly, I will create the number range object. I will go to SNRO transaction code. It is very easy to understand. Just go for the layman language, you will understand automatically. Suppose I am going for SNRO transaction code. SAP number range object. Give some number range object name. Suppose I will see, suppose Z EMP ID. 
we are creating a number range object for the employee ID. I will go for create. I will give some short text or long text. Suppose I will say employee ID. Number range for employee ID. Now here, here you need to give the length. Means suppose if I am saying yes, the particular employee ID will generate then what is the length? Suppose I'm saying it will, I'm saying it will generate between one to 10,000. So what is the maximum length? It is five, 10,000. So what we will do, suppose I'm going for number length domain. Suppose we'll go for 10. Now, now what is this warning? What is this warning? Suppose I will go for simple, simple example. Suppose you are saying, suppose you are saying, the employee ID will be between 1 to 10,000. Now, what is this warning? We need to pass the percentage of the warning. Suppose already 9,000 employee ID is generated. Then in that case, what happened? Just think, total the count is 10,000. 9,000 employee ID generated. It means 90% employee ID already generated. So if I will put 90% here, if system reaches up to 9000 and I will go for 9001, if system generate 9001, then user will automatically get a warning that very less numbers left. Suppose you are saying this particular warning is 10%. Then in that case, what will happen when 10% employee IDs are generated? 10% means it will be 1000. After 1000, whenever system will go for 1001, it will go for a warning to the user that very less employee ID left. Just recall, whenever we are creating materials through MM01, sometimes we are getting the warning, very less numbers left. Why we are getting a warning? Because based upon this only. Here you can give any percentage. Suppose you are going for 50%. Then in that case, whenever 5000 employee ID generated and whenever system will go for 5001, we will get a warning that this many employee ID generated or very less employee ID IDs left. So this is percentage of the warning. Suppose I will go for 50%. You can give anything. Now I will simply, simply go for customizing. As of now, I'm only, only going for very simple, simple number range object. I will go for customizing. Now, now if you go for customizing, you are able to see three options here. Main memory buffering, parallel buffering, no buffering. As of now, I will choose no buffering. Have you seen whenever I choose no buffering, this particular column is not there. Number of numbers in the buffer. As of now, I'm going for very simple number range object in which I'm not using buffering. Once we will finish this practical part, where I will go for a dedicated video in which I will show you all these three options. If you are going for main memory buffering, parallel buffering, then what will happen? Anyways, those who have the knowledge of the buffering topic, they can understand by the name itself. But anyways, we'll go for a dedicated video. As of now, I'm only, only going for no buffering. Means we are not going for buffer at all. We are not going for temporary memory. Now I will go for save. Whenever I will go for save, this number range object, this number range object, will store into this SAP table, TNRO. Very easy to remember, table for number range object. So in this table, you will be able to see the number range object. If I will open this table, if I will go to TNRO transaction code, if I will display this table, I will go to contents. Description itself is, Definition of number range object. I will go to contents. 
suppose i am giving z emp id it is not there as of now because we have not saved nothing now whenever i will save now you can see this okay domain 10 okay i by mistake i gave wrong okay i need to give numc 10 10 is nothing yes sir this is my mistake yes you can choose existing domain also which has a length of 10 no problem i used sap domain it is my mistake by mistake i put 10 only yes how system can understand 10 yes now i'm not going for no buffer nothing now i will save I will save this as a local object, suppose. If you want that this number range object should go to quality and production, then you need to compulsory save into that transport request. So this number range object created. If I will simply, simply go for execute, now you will be able to find. See, just see, this is the number range object. What is that domain I gave? Numc10. What is the percentage? 50%. I'm not going for no buffer. I'm not going for any buffer. Yes. And this is my name. This is the time. So everything is there into this particular table. But the short text I gave, but the long text I gave. So this is your number range object. Now we need to give number range interval also, number range values also. So how you will give? We have a button here. We have a button, this one interval click here now simply simply go for this is display firstly you are defining so you can go for change interval now you need to give number range number from number to number what is this number range number you can simply consider this as a serial number suppose 0102030304 so you can simply, simply consider this as a serial number. It is of two digits. Suppose I am giving 0, 1. Suppose I will give 1, 2, suppose. Anyways, it will not go for more than 10, okay, because I gave the length as 10. So whenever I will go for employee ID, it will generate between 1 to this particular number. Now I will go for save. Whenever I will go for save, this is the table in which we will get the number range value, number range interval. Just see, two tables. In this table, you have the number range object. In this table, you have the number range values, number range interval for that particular object. Now, if I will show you this table and an NRIV. It is very easy to remember number range intervals. If I will display, if I will go to contents, ZEMP ID is not into this table. Once I will save, it will be there. Now I will go for save. Okay, I will go for okay. Done. Now if I will show you this table, we have one number of entry. Yes. If I will execute, you can see everything is there. This is our number range object. Serial number 01 from number this to number this. So this is the table in which data is stored. So what is the summary of this particular video? Important video. In this video, we took the requirement that we will create a program. Anyways, we have not created the program as of now. In that program, we will only give the employee name, age, and employee address. And whenever we will execute, system will save the details into the table. But employee ID system will generate automatically. It means if employee ID system is generating automatically, it means we need to create a number range object. So with the help of SNRO transaction code, we created the number range object. We gave that domain by mistake. I gave 10. Okay. That is not a domain. Domain must be something now SAP domain or our domain. Then I gave the warning. Warning means 
whenever system reach up to that level after that system should give the warning that these many objects or this where these more very less objects this system should get a warning system should give a warning to us after that we have the options parallel buffering main memory buffering no buffering i simply simply choose no buffering anyways i will go for a dedicated video in which i will explain the meaning of these three things whenever you are saving a number range object it will save into this t and ro table table for number range object after that you need to assign the number range interval number range values then we simply simply clicked on to the interval button and we gave the number range values when we gave the number range values we gave the serial number and after that we gave the from value and the to value in the next video what we will do we will create a program and after creating the program we will simply use this function module because you can how you can get the next number with the help of this function module only we will pass our number range object to this particular function module and it will give us the number and we will simply save it to the database table so that part will continue in the next video and nriv is the table to store the number range intervals so that's it in this video thank you